Hey guys, what is up? It's Scott 20 here, or Lucas, bringing you guys another NHL 18 video. That is right. I'm here with one of the, I don't know, <laughs> producers. One of the producers of uh, NHL 18, uh, who specializes in franchise mode. And uh, one of the biggest things in franchise mode this year that you guys will see is the change to the overall. So do you want to tell us a little bit why, what went into that process and why? Yeah, so when we went into franchise mode this year and all the, the nice little tweaks that we've done, uh, we, we wanted to look at having more of a differentiation, not only just for the players in the game that are currently in the NHL, but also to allow the rookies that come into the mode to actually have a chance at cracking the NHL lineup. So now you'll see guys, um, like in this last draft, that like Keishu is now coming in 78. The range is now, for an NHL player, 75 to uh, 93, I believe, from 94. Um, and now you'll see that Heischer is now 78, so he's automatically within that third line scoring range. You also have guys coming into franchise through the draft a little bit higher in the future years. Um, so you may get an 82 who's already uh, a second line NHL player who's ready to go from the get-go and you can draft him first overall uh, and you know see how he progresses through. Uh, the reason behind all that is with the system that we had last year it was kind of tight, so we wanted to spread it out. It also allows us to have a bigger um, range in, in regards to just the knowing what team is good versus what team is bad. It, it does help establish that kind of, uh, um, for the lack of better terms, just being able to see uh, visually what team is actually sure. good. Like if you go to edit lines, uh, you'll notice like a team with like nine eighties in the yeah. top in, in their forward group. They're all in the green, and yeah. if you have a team like say the Canucks who are under, who only have two uh, top six forwards in the 80s and the bottom six is within the 70s, it's a lot easier to visually disting sure. uh, distinguish between that. For sure. Uh, and another big thing to franchise mode is that you guys finally got in re-signing uh, players in the middle of the season. You want to talk about how difficult that was to bring in and all, everything that went with that? Yeah, so one of the things with contract extensions is we needed to um, figure out how to get the sec for the CPU teams and the user teams to sort of know how much money they had to play with in the future year. And oddly enough, it actually helped with some of the trade logic as well. So they have a better idea of sort of what they have to play with in the future year. So adding the contract extensions uh, allowed us to not only improve um, how you know the user to actually sign a uh, sign a player, but also help a little bit of our trade logic as well. Uh, in terms of in terms of what you can do, we follow the full CBA rules, of course. Um, so you're able to offer players that sign a multi-year contract uh, immediately uh, um, at the start of the franchise to actually uh, contract extension. But if a team say signed a player midway through the year uh, to a one-year contract, uh, you would have to wait till January. So we implemented all the rules and associated with with the uh, contract extensions as well. Awesome. Uh, and another thing that you guys worked on is uh, at the deadline, having teams want to go get a yeah. player that is on an expiring deal or uh, dumping cap space. Do you want to talk about a little bit of the improved trade logic uh, coming to the trade deadline? Yeah, so we, we did a lot of little things to help improve the process of the game. Um, just the amount of deals you get now, um, you'll, and I'm sure you noticed if you, if you got a chance to play. Um, you'll be able to see that teams are um, trying to make trades to help better fit their needs. Uh, if team is getting, uh, again, I'm playing with the Canucks a lot, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, and as I'm simming through, and I'll put Alex Adler on the trade block, I had Chicago, oddly enough, who wanted a defenseman to round out their top four, uh, actually offer me a package of picks and prospects to actually uh, improve their team. So, and I actually stop, think about that trade, and see if I actually want to take that trade. And, and it's something that we really, really want to work on to actually make those CPU trades more meaningful uh, and make uh, and, and make make user to CPU trades a little bit more meaningful. So we played around with trade values as well to sort of help help make the trades feel a little bit more authentic and feel a little bit more meaningful in that regard. For sure. Uh, as far as free agency goes, I heard you guys kind of refine the process of what a player wants and with RFAs and all that stuff. Can you talk a little about a little about a little bit about that? <laughs> uh, yeah, we did uh, do some tweaks with the free agency logic as well. Um, so we updated uh, some of the logic. Like if a player that comes out of the draft, um, they they happen to be a, a gem that just wasn't drafted. So a lot of the league is actually undrafted players. You'll actually notice that teams will now go after them at the start of free agency, creating a kind of a bit more in the past. The user could 
easily yeah. fuck some of these guys up. So we've changed it, uh, changed it around so that the CPU will kind of go after those rebuilding type of players. Uh, re the rebuilding teams will go after yeah. the uh, the younger players out of free agency. We also played around with the um, w with some of the uh, logic just for the normal teams and who they go after. Um, we've done some stuff to uh, ensure that uh, players after a certain amount of time won't reject contracts just because uh, your team isn't good enough. Yeah. So after X amount of days that they've been stale in free agency, they won't reject based off of your team not being a championship quality team. Um, they'll they'll be more um, they're more be, they'll be more inclined to actually sign with your team because they want a job, yeah. of course. So that sort of helps out the free agency as well. Uh, there is also. Um, uh, roll off the top oh, of no head worries. here. Um, uh, there's also a few changes just in, in terms of who they target, like goalies. Yeah. Uh, if teams weaker in goalies, they will actually go after goalies. So try to address, I know many many of the fans that play franchise know the future years, the goalies uh, being a little bit uh, out of whack yeah. in regards to which, which teams have good goalies. Yeah. So we try to address that as best we could. So they'll go after goalies now. They also will try to put goalies on the trade block yeah. if they have multiple guys. It's a lot better. Um, you'll you know, just playing the other day had you know a, a good range of goalies, so it doesn't it, it does get a lot better because of all the stuff we do with trading and free agency For sure. and all that stuff. And one thing I really notice when playing franchise is the whole front page. As soon as you load up franchise, is so much better. Yes. You guys want to talk about a little uh, what you guys thought about putting into there and why you put stuff in there? Oh yeah, um, that was one of my favorite improvements with all the cool stuff we've done this year. Uh, <laughs> It, to me, like just being able to get in and out of menus was so exactly. cumbersome. Now being able to go directly into the menu and click trade player yep. right from the front page is just so much better. Yeah. Or if I want to go view the trade block or edit my trade block or view the draft class for the upcoming year, everything's right yeah. there. I don't have to go through a sub menu anymore. But uh, it was just a, as a as a team, the goal was to sort of make that feel, that, that experience feel so much more easier and less clunkier yeah. to, to, to make because you know you're in and out of the menus exactly. in, in franchise so making that as less cumbersome as possible it was obviously one of the things that we wanted to get done all right well i appreciate you taking the time to talk about franchise mode hopefully everyone watching is very excited to get their new franchise mode starting nhl 18 i appreciate yeah, yeah. it